This is the final part of a three-part series on why millennials move overseas. If you're coming to the series for the first time, I'd suggest going back. It's really not going to make any sense without seeing the other two first. In part one, I talked to one of my best friends, Christian, who just moved to Canada. In part two, I talked to a handful of people I know who started off life in New Zealand but are now spread across the globe to get to the root of why everyone is doing it. Why is everyone moving overseas? And in part three, this part, I talk to my family and come to a decision on how I want to live my life. Up first, a phone call with someone I've known for, well, my entire life, my favorite female and badass babe, my mother. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were asleep. I'm sorry. It's all right. Are you okay? Yeah, I just ran for a chat. Oh, That's all. okay. Did you have a good day? No, I just had work. But Luke went to buy me William, but he has unfortunately been adopted. After I cried okay. lots last night. That was nice of Luke to do that. I know. It's really cute, eh? Yeah. That was lovely. Just come and get Belly. Yeah, okay. Come get the old bag. Okay, dokes. <laughs> <coughs> Can I ask you a question for my video? Okay. Did you ever want to move overseas to live? No. No. <laughs> I thought you did. Of course I did. I wanted to go to France. To live? Yes. And like set your life up? Yes. Why? Because I just thought it'd be really cool. Why so I did. Oh, I want to go and live in France. Why didn't you, why hasn't it happened? <laughs> um, because I couldn't take you away from our family, because they're so yeah. important. Yeah. Family's the most important thing to me, so, and, so, I couldn't, and I couldn't see me living away from, and I couldn't see me living away from Nana. I don't, yeah. I just couldn't do that. I didn't want you growing up without our family. Yeah. Well, thank you. So. I sacrificed your dream for me. And then I just thought, eh, we can just miss it. Yeah. <coughs> it's okay. I don't think I want to move overseas to live. No, I don't know how people... People do it. I don't know how they can do it because yeah. I could not see me moving away from. I couldn't see me moving away from you. You were. I couldn't move kid. from you and Nina. Yeah. I just couldn't. I am so grateful for my mum for giving up her dreams to give me a life surrounded by love with my family, and that's why I love it here. Over the past six months through making these videos, and on a bigger level, making this decision, I've come to realise how much of a family girl I am. I love knowing they're there for me, and I love being there for them. I love their love and support and safety they provide me. Walking into my mum's house feels like walking into a warm hug. I really am just a typical Cancerian homebody. My family mean the world to me. During this whole mess of confusion, there has been Luke. Always steadfast and steady, holding my hand and hugging me tight when I cry. Supporting me, standing by my side, encouraging me that if I did want to move, he would support it. He is English from Oxford and he moved over here when he was but a wee lad. <laughs> A teenager. It seemed fitting, absolutely appropriate that I talked to him on the topic. And we had many conversations. But let's go back to the first conversation we had on the topic. On April the 12th, 2017, at 2.34am, with our bellies filled with kebabs, 
11 days before Christian left and 5 days after Luke's birthday. Wait. What's the first question? Oh, I'm not asking you questions. Well, I'm not asking you questions. <laughs> There's a conversation, but... Oh, okay, well then. Why did you realize it's Really? Yeah. Um, I don't have a choice to begin with. What was it like? Moving to the other side of the world. Without your bedroom. Oh. I was quite... should be doing because everyone else is doing this thing and I should do it. I don't even know if I want it. I don't want to do it. You don't know if you want it until you try that, right? I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I feel bad I don't because <laughs> everyone else is doing it. Everybody, just a notable few. Just a notable few. Or even moving to, to, to another city and you know, just staying, just staying in Auckland. Well, Auckland's the best city I've ever lived in. <laughs> <laughs> you stop sniffing. I like. My face. This feels like a face. No, it feels dry. Ah, no tears. <laughs> You've cried all your tears. Yeah, they feel a lot better. 
It took about an hour, but my face was finally dry. No tears, no sniffles, a stillness in my mind. I had accepted that friends are moving away. It just happens at this age. Let's rewind to sometime in April before Christian left. Christian is the guy that sparked this whole series of videos. <laughs> We went out to dinner with uni friends and I remember feeling so anxious because I didn't feel like my life was exciting or even adequate. I felt like I wasn't enough, like my life after uni had turned into a shambles. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, Christian. Alright, <laughs> see you later. I just had dinner with um, people from uni and I was really anxious about going to dinner with people from uni because I don't know like I see people and I feel like they've got their whole entire life sorted you know what I mean or I see them on Instagram and stuff like that and I think that they've got things sorted but what I realized today is that people actually don't have their shit together and you know what that's okay that's totally fine um so yeah that's a new thing I learned I realized tonight is that people don't have their shit together and people are all doing different things and I thought that everyone had this one goal to like travel and move overseas but what I realized is that they don't they all have these different ideas and different things and different stories and I don't know, different things that they want to achieve with their life and things they do and people are experiencing anxiety and things like that and it's not all sunshine and roses and that's something that I found really really surprising because I didn't I didn't realize that other people were experiencing the things that I was experiencing. I naively, I naively thought that everyone was kind of <laughs> experiencing the same, like, same bliss and, like, pure amazingness in life, whatever. And I don't know, it was kind of, I was so anxious before I went, I was so nervous, but it was kind of freeing to see that everyone is doing their own thing. And it was freeing in the aspects that I can do whatever I want and my life isn't better than someone else's and their life isn't better than mine. We're just all experiencing life differently. And that is what life is. That's what being human is about, is experiencing the life in your terms and deciding how what you want to do with it and how you want to live it. And... I don't know, that feels pretty magical knowing that it is definitely a freeing experience. I'm starting to feel really comfortable with the decision I've made to stay in New Zealand and Auckland in the city I've always known. But I'm starting to feel comfortable with the choice, the life decision. The choice that I'm making in my life, the choices and decisions. I'm starting to become more comfortable with the decisions that I'm making in my life and the choices that I'm making and the life I am leading and living. And I don't know, I'm starting to accept it more and become more comfortable with it, you know? Hey, pups. Let's get back to Luke. Let's go back to present day. The most recent thing you've seen on this YouTube channel lately, the 29th of May 2017. Shall we have a wee conversation about oh, Okay. About living here? Living here? Yeah. Wiring or? No, just in Auckland, Auckland New Zealand. Can you. Maybe you could ask me questions because you know how I don't really like talking much <laughs> or can't talk very well. Why do you think people move overseas? I think. Well, I think there's lots of reasons, but maybe some people move to escape things 
people want more adventure and something more exciting but they don't realize that they can also just get adventure and excitement in their own city okay. and I think people move for career opportunities as well because New Zealand's quite isolated and away from everything so people move for that reason I think in my opinion I just, I just think people don't really appreciate where they're born what you've got yeah. yeah. Well, I don't like Oxford in England, but, you know, it's a beautiful place. It's beautiful. But I'd never want to live there. Why? Because. Because why? Because look at this place. I think, I just think that everyone's different. For me, I don't think I... For me, I love living here. Like, I know a lot of people hate Auckland. But I don't understand why people hate this, this place. Out of all the places I've lived in, I think this is the favourite place I've Because I just think it's so vast and I love things like beaches and water and... There's not many other yeah. big cities in the world that you can be in the city, five minutes later, you're on a beach, five minutes down the road, you're in the country. You know, there's no, there's no cities like that. Can't do that anyway. Well, there, there will be somewhere. Why would you go somewhere else looking for that when you go away? I think part of me still feels like it's the boring option to not like move away and stuff. But the thing is, I love this place and my family is here. And by family, I mean you as well. It's here, like, I think. I think a big, the, I think the biggest reason for staying is because I have my family here, and I'm a very family orientated person. I I initially thought that well, when I started like seeing everyone move overseas, and that was a whole big deal to me. Oh my god, I thought he was carrying a dead dog. It's just his boots. <laughs> but um, when it was initially like a big deal to me, or like a big, you know, thing I was contemplating, I thought that moving overseas would fix something or like solve the issues of me feeling bad or something like that. I like, think you just come back and be broke and like shit. <laughs> I'll just need to find a job to pay off my holiday. Yeah, <laughs> but like I feel like. I don't think I would do too well overseas, just in my current state, but also being so far away from all the people I love, not having access to them so readily, yeah. and being away when bad shit happens, you know? Yeah. And I was looking at it like it's, oh, maybe moving on soon is a way to solve things, or like, I'd feel happier if I moved overseas because everyone else seems to be so much happier. And, Rah, 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 and I'd feel more accomplished or something. So I'd still be feeling lost over there, I'd just have changed locations. So it's not going to solve this lost feeling. Well, the problem is with like, social media and things like that, is you only see, like, you know, people don't post, oh, I'm having a shit day. Yeah. There's some photos, you know, but they post <laughs> the cool stuff. Some the fun people stuff. do. Well, some people do. <laughs> not the people I like, things <laughs> So what, what do you think your thing is that you need to find? The void you need to fill? I need to find out what I love. Career wise? Yeah. Like. Yeah. No. It's now the 29th of May and Luke and I have been living together in a semi seaside community for about 19 days. <laughs> it's bliss. And my daughter, Isabel, my dog, she came to stay. So we took her to the beach and we had one final conversation on the topic. Could you see yourself living anywhere with you? No. No? No. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I love it here. It's beautiful. Yeah. This feels like home. I'll still travel though, but this, this definitely feels like home. I take solace in the fact that 
choosing to stay here with my loved ones in this beautiful country is my decision and my choice. Whatever your choice may be, whatever country you live in, whether your homeland or not, make it yours. And I think that's exactly what I've taken away from making this video. This is my first narrative piece. It took a lot longer than I thought to make. It's been in my head since January, but I have a plan for more in the future. I'd like to thank Christian, Caroline, Charlie, Tanani, Tara, and my mum for taking the time out of your busy lives to talk to me. This video wouldn't be possible without you. And I'd like to thank Luke for putting up with my tears, hugging me tight, and for choosing to live your life with me. Thank you. This is Urban Wild. I'm Brittany, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much.